What's... What's tattoos about his Poo? Tea? Toes? You know, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew? Amazon's Lord of the Rings series is set to rival Game of Thrones in its epicness. In this video, I want to discuss three separate things that we all want to see in this up and coming Lord of the Rings. We'll call it prequel series, as it's set in an age during Middle Earth that is hundreds, which change that, thousands of years before the events of Lord of the Rings. Now before we get started, please, do me a massive favor and slap a like on this video, as the like goal is going to be 420, <laughs> in reference to what Aragorn was smoking in that pipe in the Prancing Pony. And also, this is the most important part, make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on, so that way you'll get an alert every single time I drop a video throughout this wait for the Amazon prequel Lord of the Rings series, as well as House of the Dragon, or as I call it, The Long Night. Now kicking things off, uh, the actual time frame of this Amazon Lord of the Rings series that will be coming out it supposedly was going to come out in 2021 obviously the pandemic happened and pushed pretty much every project that was said to come out this year and next year back so there are several projects that will hopefully remain and come out on time next year but i'm pretty sure this lord of the Rings series with everything being held up especially even though new zealand was able to go on lockdown early and clear their country of covid but then i think it was it it's it's all going to be tricky i'm positive that this new lord of the Rings series is still somewhat on track but for the most part we'll likely be getting it in early 2022 if they're smart in my opinion they'll have it going on either at the same time as how of the dragon or right after or right before it i'm sure this lord of the Rings series is a little bit further along as these announced a lot of the cast but really only time will tell now to dictate the time frame of this show most people are going with numenor as amazon released a series of maps that sort of led up to the last one being a picture of uh, Numenor, which most hardcore Lord of the Rings fans immediately recognize because Numenor is basically thought of ancient Rome in the fictional kingdom of Atlantis. And I'm actually about to reference a page that was written up by the user Chin underscore Geller over on the Reddit subgroup called uh, Lord of the Rings underscore on underscore prime. But I asked him a few months back if I could use the post that he made because it was so well written. But he mentions that Numenor is best thought of as a cross between ancient Rome and Atlantis. And from its descendants came the people of the kingdoms of Gondor in the south, known to the Lord of the Rings viewers readers, uh, and Arnor of the north. Arnor's remnants are the time of the Lord of the Rings are the Dúnedain rangers from where aragorn is from of course and ruins like weathertop it was destroyed in the war with angmar alluded to in the three hobbit movies also hailing from numenor are relics such as the ring of barahir unrelated to the nine rings of power which we see in the main series and another super important artifact comes from this numenor time period and that's narsal which is carried by aragorn in fragments which he has reforged in the return of the king and carries into battle against sauron and all of his forces and one of the main things that happens on this island Numenor is in the year 3319 which was its deluge uh, it existed for the entire duration of the second age leading up to that point although all the cities shown on the map that uh, Amazon gave us weren't established until around the 33rd year of the age the inhabitants of Numenor slowly succumbed to decadence before Sauron corrupted all of them from the inside, leading to the downfall of the island. A small group of survivors from Numenor who did not listen to Sauron's advice and basically were able to ward off his influence and didn't succumb to his power were able to form something called the Last Alliance, which was similar to, you know, the Fellowship of the Ring. Sort of relating back to what I was saying earlier about Sauron, this is going to be a particular version of Sauron. Now, it's noted that for this Amazon series, Sauron is going to be shown in his glory as someone who is 
basically going around Numenor manipulating a lot of the higher up houses in power, which is very similar to Game of Thrones, but he's going to be corrupting them and gaining power. Uh, it's noted that this is going to be like Sauron during the Second Age, which is actually the forging of the One Ring during this time period. It's noted that after remaining hidden and dormant for 500 years, Sauron began revealing himself once more, and by SA 1000, he gathered his power and established himself in the land of Mordor, in eastern Middle-earth, and began building the dreaded Barudu near Mount Doom. Sauron soon began raising massive armies of orcs, trolls, and other creatures from the days of Morgoth, as well as corrupting the hearts of men, chiefly the Easterlings and Suthrons and the Hard Dream with delusions of power and wealth. It may be noted that at first he was not wholly evil, rather intending to rebuild Middle-earth from the destruction caused at the battle at the end of the First Age, but slowly he was corrupted by the lore of power and the bonds Melkor placed on him, causing him to revert to his old devices, so that by the late Second Age and Third Age, he was considered to be, throughout all of Middle-earth, as the reincarnation of evil. And that's what the show is going to be focusing on, uh, according to the clues that we've all been given from the pictures of the map that Amazon has been leaking. So this is, you know, late Second Age, the fall of Numenor. We're basically going to get to see Sauron at his sort of still human and still battling with the bonds that Melkor was placed on him. And if you are unaware, Melkor is a figure who is later known as Morgoth, and he was actually the first Dark Lord and the primordial source of evil throughout all of Middle-earth. So he's basically the boss of Sauron. Originally, Melkor was actually the most powerful of the Einar, and he was created by Eru Iluvatar, and Melkor actually rebelled against his creator, Eru Iluvatar. Uh, sorry, these names are really fun to say. And out of pride, it was that he rebelled and sought to corrupt Arda. After committing many evils in the First Age, such as the theft of the Silmarils, uh, which resulted in his name Morgoth and the destruction of the two lamps and the two trees of Valinor, Morgoth was defeated by the host of Valinor in the War of the Wraith as punishment. Or sorry, and as punishment, he was cast out of Arda and into the Void, though it was told that he would returned one day. It was actually prophesied that he would do so. So what's interesting is that what's similar is that the Silmarils are not necessarily the same as the Rings of Power, but it's sort of a story, much like in uh, George R. R. Martin's universe and uh, Song of Ice and Fire, you will learn that throughout the history, or in this case Middle Earth, that there is a story repeated. One of them being a love story that's between Baron and Luthien, which I'll talk about in a second. But another one being that we have someone who was becomes this ultimate evil figure and sort of creates these devices. In this, uh, in this case, it was the rings in the main story. But uh, before that, with Melkor, it was the Silmarils. And this story we. See see has a similar result in what happens to Sauron, which is what this series is going to be based on. So just to sort of reiterate, the first thing we want to see in this new Amazon Lord of the Rings prize, Prime series is a development or the a full drawn out version of Sauron. We want to see him when he still has some of his humanity left and him struggling with that. Because we all know that what great what makes a great drama and great television is someone who is human that we can all relate to. We all have evil thoughts, but we don't all necessarily act out on them. And the best part of it is, is that we'll actually get to see Sauron, who, if you are really unaware, which there are some that I'm sure a lot of my subscribers who maybe have just watched the Lord of the Rings movies, but we don't actually get to see Sauron in the Lord of the Rings movies. We get to see a version of him in the very first movie, sort of in flashbacks, but the eye of Sauron is a remnant what's left of his power. Because much like Morgoth, he was cast out, and we didn't get to see Sauron at his full power. So this new series is going to show Sauron while he's dealing with that corruption and becoming full evil and the battle that actually leads to him being cast out of Middle-earth and why he has the eye in the Lord of the Rings series, acting as sort of a vessel for the plane of Middle-earth. Another thing I want to quickly mention, and I sort of mentioned it earlier, is we have to see Love Story. The main story that we've seen in Lord of the Rings is a story between 
between a human and an elf that fall in love. And that's something that's repeated throughout Tolkien's work is that two separate types of creatures can fall in love with each other. And, and Aragorn and Arwen is who I'm referring to, and they are sort of the reincarnation of Baron and Luthien. For those who are unaware, Baron is the son of Barahir. Uh, cut of Silmaril from Morgoth's crown as the bride price for Luthien, daughter of the elf king Thingol and the Melina of Maya. Now, this story actually takes place during the first age of Middle Earth, uh, about 6,500 years before the events of Lord of the Rings. So basically, what ends up happening is that he was slain by, I'm gonna butcher this one, Kar Chelroth, the wolf of Angbad, but alone of mortal men returned from the dead. He lived with Luthien on Tol Galen in Osriaran and fought the dwarves at Sarn Athrad. He was the great grandfather of Elrond and Elros, and thus the ancestor of the Numenorean kings. After the fulfillment of the quest of the Silmaril and Baron's death, Luthien chose to become mortal and share Baron's fate. Very similar to what happens to Aragorn and Arwen in the main Lord of the Rings series. So basically what I'm getting at is that we have to see a human elf love story in this new Amazon Lord of the Rings prequel series. And the last thing I think we're all expecting to see from this series is war. One of the major things to me as a kid anyway, before having actually read the Lord of the Rings books, which I'm actually working my way through right now as sort of like a reread. Really, I only read The Hobbit as a kid, but that's battle. The, the, the Two Towers, to me, has some of the greatest battle sequences of all time. In film, for sure, by far, but obviously this little thing called Game of Thrones and the Battle of the Bastards and Hard Home came out, and those are some epic war sequences that, because it's been so long... You know, Lord of the Rings, those sequences from the Two Towers and the Return of the King, and obviously the very first Lord of the Rings movie, The Fellowship, they don't necessarily hold up as well because it's been so long. But this new Amazon series will, of course, turn that around, and I am going to be amazed and super excited for the year of 2022 because it's looking like that's when this new series is going to be out, and so is House of the Drag. And Sir Hunt's Reviews is going to be covering and making content for both of those television series from now until they come out, and then once they come out, I'll be making episode reviews. So make sure you are subscribed. Alright, and that seems like a good point to wrap this video up. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. If you could please slap a like on this video. As the like goal is going to be 420, <laughs> or as I call it, what Aragorn was smoking in his pipe at the Prancing Pony. Also, make sure you're subscribed, and this is the most important part. Make sure you have your notifications turned on so that you can avoid YouTube's fuckery and get alerted every single time I drop a video throughout this long night or the wait for the Amazon Lord of the Rings series in Game of Thrones spinoff known as House of the Dragon. You'll get an alert every single time I drop a video throughout this wait for then. And I want to give a super special shout out to every single member of my Patreon family over on patreon.com slash reviews. Super special shout out again and thank you to every single person watching this video. My name's Mark and this is Spencer Hunts Reviews.